Yo, what's good family? It's V-Rob here, checking in with y'all from South Beach, Yammy, Yammy, Florida. Shout out to all my Miami folks, Floridians out here, man. Been out here in Florida for the last about eight days now. Spent like four days in Orlando, spent like the last four or five days in Yammy, but I just wanted to do this intro, y'all, just real quick. This video, the rest of this video was recorded in Chicago um, about like a month and a half ago, right? And really like, it's kind of a recap of where my life was about three years ago when I like quote unquote left YouTube and like where it's been and where it's currently at and where it's going. Um, I just want to tell you guys just how grateful I am for you guys to check out this video and to still be riding with me. I've been getting a ton of emails recently from a few fans, you know, over the last few months just asking me where I've been at and how much they miss my videos and everything. And so like this, this means a lot to me right here. And it means a lot to me for all of y'all to be tapping into this video and, you know, wanting to tune back into the V-Rob journey. And so I really, I really appreciate y'all, man, for all the love, the support over the years and, you know, everything that we were able to accomplish with this channel has been the foundation for where we've been able to go since then. And so I really want to make a return to YouTube here very soon, man, with more consistent uploads and not really sure what that looks like as of now, but been brainstorming this whole week here out in Florida, man, and beyond grateful and beyond blessed for all the opportunities, blessings, and blessings that God has placed in our lives over the last few years. But without further ado, y'all, time to tie back in. Hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Let's get to it. Yo, what's good, y'all? This is V-Rob here, um, October 17th, 2023, just a week after my 22nd birthday, y'all. As you guys can see, we're here in downtown Chicago. Um, I live here now. Uh, I just moved full time to Chicago this year. Um, you know, was living in the suburbs and was traveling a lot last year. Uh, but I, I like to say that I officially moved to Chicago full time uh, earlier this year. Got a crib here in the South Loop and really been enjoying it. But, you know, it, it was wild, bro. Before I pressed record on this camera, bro. I was taking a look back at my YouTube channel and looking at my videos and a lot of videos I turned private, a lot of videos I took down, some videos I kept up that I thought were important for people to know and to watch and understand. And um, it was interesting, bro. Really the last time I posted something on this channel outside of like, you know, the Paris Fashion Week vlog at the uh, top of this year with all the fashion designers that we linked with from the Enigma Corp team um, was really the top of 2021, bro. Uh, I posted like a Dunkaroos recipe video that I shot with all my friends, Will, Andrew, Jay, Tyler, and Max, all at Xavier. And, um, you know, bro, thinking like, it's really been since the top of 2021 since I've really posted on here and giving you an update about life i really felt you know it was it was a good time right now to kind of give you guys a rundown of what has happened in my life since that moment and you know what has transpired over the last two years and where i'm at personally spiritually mentally physically everything um and i'm sorry i keep looking up here because i'm using this fx6 and the monitor is like above the camera. So I'm just making sure that it stays in focus and everything. But um, yeah, so I mean, obviously the title of this video is, you know, why I decided to drop out of film school. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that in the title because there is a lot more specific topics that I wanna get into in different videos. But I think to catch everyone up to speed on where I, cur where I currently am and where I was around the time I, you know, stopped posting consistently, the reasoning behind it, and, you know, kind of the journey that I took, you know, between then and now. So, you know, really, I would say I stopped posting consistently on the channel um, in October of 2020. So that was three years ago, you know, 
And during this time, bro, I was still extremely invested into making basketball content. I was still extremely invested into, you know, posting consistently every single day, trying to get out the most content and videos as much as I could. And, you know, a huge part about me even going to film school was this like nervousness that I wouldn't have time to do YouTube, you know, and during this time as well, like I was working full time uh, with Oprah side, Clark Williams, I was editing his videos full time, literally every single day, like working like seven to 10 hours. Um, I was doing video edits for yay at the time, like, there was literally so many things I was just like, coming at me, pause everywhere all at once, like, you know, I started my freshman year at the end of August of that year of 2020 at Xavier and in Cincinnati. And it was just like a really weird period, bro. You know, like we hopped in the school and, you know, COVID numbers were still on the rise. There was no um, vaccine. All of the really basically everything was still shut down, but everyone was still like, we're still going to, you know, start schools back up and you know, all my friends and I, like, we got quarantined the first month, like, all of us were, you know, locked down for, like, a week or two just at the beginning of September of our freshman years of college, and, you know, there was a lot of anxiousness, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of depression, there was a lot of, you know, stress, not just, I'm not saying for myself, but I'm saying collectively for my class, there was a lot of questions, there was a lot of doubt, there was a lot of you know, inconsistencies as well. You know, I mean, for our entire first year of college, we uh, we had to wear masks, you know, from the fall of 2020 to, you know, the end of spring 2021. But, <coughs> you know, a lot of it, bro, like, I noticed, especially during the summer of that year in 2020, before I went to college, there was a lot of mental obstacles that I went through. A lot of you know conversations with myself and what i wanted to do in the world and after graduating high school it was kind of like a wake-up moment like you know how can i how can i turn what i've been doing the last three years of my life that i've been you know waking up at 5 5 30 a.m before school every single day in high school to record to edit to work on my youtube channel like how can i continue to build this out and how can i like really build a foundation for myself that like I can build a career off of this, you know? And, um, you know, a lot of that summer, bro, was like really spent with me outside by myself, taking hikes every day, taking long walks, writing in my journal, taking video diaries. Like there was a lot of conversations that were going on mentally. There was a lot of prayer involved, you know, praying to God for me to step into my purpose and to really find what is right for me in this next path. and. You know, during that time too, bro, even before I graduated in May of that year, I was sending out proposals and pitches to numerous news networks and TV stations on potential pitch ideas that was kind of similar to the content that I was posting on YouTube at the time. It was centered around the NBA and it was centered around, you know, doing like these short documentaries that would kind of cover like a day in the life of like an NBA arena on game day. So we the concept was I was going to go to all um, 29 NBA arenas and do like a vlog documentary of what the experience is like for a game day at that venue. So like interview not just the players and the coaches, but also like the people that work at the arena, the fans, spend a full like 24 hours there and document, you know, what goes into all the logistics and behind the scenes stuff of putting a big game together, you know? Um, and so I put together like this huge deck and, you know, included my portfolio and resume in there and literally sent it out to like 15 different people, bro. And um, I sent it out the week before our country got shut down, like literally the first week of March, bro. Like literally a week after that, school got shut down for the rest of the year, everything. And so I, I actually got a response uh, from ESPN and they shared with me like hey we got your deck we're very impressed but at the moment given the current circumstances we're not going to be moving forward in any productions and uh that was a big blow for me man like you know i really i was not inspired or energized to go to college and 
you know, my entire senior year of high school was really built upon like finding opportunities to allow myself to, whether it's to move to New York or Chicago or LA or stay in Cincinnati and work full time. Like I was just trying to build a foundation that I, you know, financially could stay stable and to like not have to worry about going to school or whatnot. But, you know, God then really blessed me with a, um, with a great scholarship to Xavier University to be a part of the fellowship there. Um, it's like community engaged fellowship that, you know, there's only eight people per class and there's like over 800 contestants and I got selected to be one of them and it was a very substantial scholarship and I love doing community service work and, you know, it, it seemed very fitting, you know, and so despite me not being energized to go to school, like, I decided to go. You know, a lot of that could have been pressure from my family. Um, and a lot of that was like a last resort moment too, you know, given the pandemic, you know, the entire industry, industries that I was, still am, you know, uh, have relationships in, in the sports world, in the entertainment world, in the music world, in the film world, like, that was all shut down, obviously, you know? And so I, I go to school and as I was saying earlier, man, like it, it was very untraditional of what a first year school college experience should be, right? And so um, I just didn't have a good first year, bro, you know? Like it, it felt like I was kind of taking a step back in my career and a lot of the things that I was taught, cause I was studying film, obviously. Um, a lot of the things that I was being taught, it felt like I was just wasting my time, you know? And um, it was it was really interesting, bro. Like, like I said, with like the Kanye stuff, with the OSN stuff, you know, I was still posting consistently on my channel, especially in the fall of 2020. Like, I felt like school was on the back burner constantly, you know? Like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? And um, going into 2021, bro, like, it was really interesting. So like, I felt maturity wise, like I was stepping away, stepping out of the ecosystem that I had created on YouTube, you know? And it was like, you know, this like energized reaction videos, video essays with a lot of passion and energy and yelling in the camera. And I just felt like whether it was me being, you know, exposed to like college students day to day or whatnot, I just felt, or, you know, during the summer, like really stepping into like, what, what do I want to do on this earth? What does God even have me here for? And I, I just felt like at that moment, like it felt like I was transitioning out of that stage in life. And I, I didn't want to be this person that just made these reaction videos. And I really wanted to create and innovate and just not be a reactionary person, both like literally and also like psychologically, spiritually, you know? And so going into the new year of 2021, like, you know, I posted a few videos that took like a lot more time, like the um, like the dunk, uh, the Dunkaroo video, and you know, a month after that. So this is like March of 2021. I'm sorry, like I have like a a really interesting ability to like visualize time. Like I could see like a timeline. So like it, it's really easy for me to just go, you know, moment to moment. So I'm trying my best to, you know, express that to you guys with my voice and my words. And so we're in like. March of 2021, and I posted this on here too, but it was the live stream that I hopped on with Chance, Chance the Rapper. And um, we talked about a ton of different things about filmmaking, you know, video production, some of our favorite, you know, influences from directors to films to <coughs> everything, the hero's journey, story structure, a ton of different things. And so, that that relationship like really sprung right there you know i had known chance prior to that for like two years being in this like uh fan group chat called the g-force that's still running live today um but i was added in that group chat from my friend sam pilgrim who i just like got the chance to meet virtually over twitter in 2019 because i was growing a huge audience on youtube and on twitter and he just somehow fought, found me you know and Chance reached out to him and was like, I want to start a group chat with, you know, my fans across the world. Can you make one? And Pilgrim just being the homie, like asked me to be in it in 2019. And so like, 
you know that that's a crazy butterfly effect moment where like you know if sam and i never connected if sam never asked me to be in that group chat like the moments that have occurred in the last two years would not have happened you know and that it's really blessed to see how god is able to make everyone's journey so specific and so exact to the individual journey and path and purpose that like it was all meant to happen for me you know and so um chance and i's relationship like really sprung in that moment and you know from that spring like three weeks later in april he sent me a dm on instagram it was like you know would you be interested in being a um an interviewer for a documentary i'm making and i was like absolutely you know i was finishing my freshman year of uh, college trying to figure out what i was going to do in the summer i was getting pressure from my parents and you know <coughs> chance asked me um you know a few weeks later that you know would i be down to come to chicago uh, the first or second weekend of May and to be a panelist for this movie premiere that he's making this concert film and that would be the magnificent coloring world that he released in the summer of that year of 2021 it was like a concert film that he made like four years prior that he released through AMC then that summer and it lived you know throughout the US and in Europe as well and so I was like yeah of course and so I fly to Chicago uh, first time by myself he gives me a hotel room right in the city and you know the first it's, it was a two uh two night premiere and so the first night you know i don't know what i'm getting myself into I haven't heard from much haven't heard much from him and you know i get there i remember you know going to the polo store here in chicago that day getting a whole new outfit and um we get there and after the movie ends, I find out Justin Bieber is doing the, you know, panel or the Q&A with Chance for night one. And Justin does his thing and, you know, I, I stand out of the theater uh, and run into Chance, you know, after waiting for like an hour. Because, you know, there was like 500 people there, you know, all from Chicago and when to see him. And he comes up, gives me a hug. This is the first time we ever meet in person. And he's like, are you down to do the uh, panel tomorrow? And I was like yes absolutely you know like confidence is what has got me to this point confidence is what's going to get me to the next the next horizon the next step and so we go to the after party at soho house and me and justin bieber like share sweet potato fries together and you know chop it up i show him a deck that me and my friend abel made outlining like his uh concepts for his drew brand and he's like this is super fire i was like oh you do want to see more of our work that we do and he was like nah I'm good and so I was like that's real because there's like 20 other people trying to get to him and so anyways I'm like freaking out internally because I'm like damn like I gotta top what Justin did you know I'm the second panelist and so I stay up to like 3 30 in the morning bro like writing down questions in my journal and my phone doing this research and you know I was doing research like the last month or so but it hits you that like eve like the day before the night before and so you know, I'm studying and, you know, I was really keen on not uh, having the questions out in front of me. You know, I, I remember like when I was in high school, bro, when I would do speeches, whether as I was running for a student council position or speaking at a pep rally or whatever, like I, I always pride myself in not having the speech in front of me. You know, I, I would memorize it and, you know, same thing, like, you know, spent all the next day like prepping reading over the questions and you know had a really amazing time bro like that that was one of those moments where like you know you've been training for this game in this moment for so long and i felt like I, i've capitalized on it i made the most of that moment that god presented me and so um the summer was interesting and so i flew back to cincinnati not sure what was next and you know, during that summer, I would send Chance and his team, you know, uh, video files, you know, 3D animations, because I was really deep in Blender at the time. And just like ideas, I would make like decks outlining like film camp ideas, music video ideas. And I would, um, I even shared with him like a deck, and it, it was called The Future of Storytelling. And it outlined, you know, the previous work I've done with like Yay and 
with my own stuff, with Disney, with ESPN, with Diz, with the NBA, and all these different things. And it also expressed of what I wanted to do in this world, in this in this life, and what I felt my purpose is. And um, I truly believe to this day, bro, like that deck that I sent to him, I sent it to him like a week after I uh, did the Instagram live with him in March. I really feel like that deck, like looking back even in like 20 years from now bro like that deck is going to be something that i can look back on and say that changed the direction and outcome of my journey you know and you know i i would definitely express that to anyone bro that like presentation and the way that you present yourself and your ideas is everything as not just even in this industry but in this world you know and you know, I, I want to give a shout out to my close brothers like Abel, Enigma, Brenton, Patrick. Like, you know, you guys have really shown me what presentation should and what it should feel like and look like. And I, so many moments of my life have been accelerated and have moved forward because of great decks, you know. And so, shout out to y'all. But anyway, so I get, I get back to Cincy and it's a really, it's a weird summer, bro. My my family is moving to Oklahoma City this summer, um, which it, it was really hard, bro. You know, we moved out of the house that I essentially grew up in my entire back half of my childhood from like age like nine to, you know, however old I was then, you know, 18, 19 years old. And so um, it was really hard, bro. And my family moved into an entirely new part of the country and you know, it was it was really difficult for me, bro. You know, I had moved out, but, you know, a huge part of the reason why I went to Xavier was I was only, like, 20, 25 minutes away from my family. So I would often see them on weekends and even on weekdays as well, you know, like, during the NBA bubble, like, I would drive back after class to go watch, like, the playoff games with my dad, you know? And so they moved around, like, August or so of that year, literally the first week of August, and... um I remember flying back to Cincinnati, bro, and it was it was a really weird feeling. Like Cincinnati is always going to be home for me, but you know, touching back down and the airport there just by myself and understanding, you know, my brother's going to start school in a week in Oklahoma. I'm about to start school again my uh, sophomore year, like something just didn't feel right, you know. And so, you know, the second year sophomore year i'm taking more of my film centric classes and there's this like narrative going around in my film uh my film school like oh vaughn is this like clouded up dude who did like work with yay this past year and worked with chance and you know worked with all these youtubers and like did the disney stuff like word got around quick after the chance stuff of like the previous work that i've done and um you know, I remember it was like one of the first or second weeks of school, one of my professors from Xavier like stopped me after class and was like, yeah, like I, I heard about the stuff you did with Chance this summer and all that. Like, what are you trying to do? And I was like, man, I'm trying to be like a director. I'm trying to shoot music videos and I'm trying to get work in LA and Chicago. And I remember he stopped me and was like, yeah you know that isn't even like real storytelling like i hate what the music and entertainment industry has become like you know you always be saying like you want to be a storyteller like you know joseph campbell or george lucas i was really expressed with my influences bro and like everyone that knows me knows how big of an influence george has been on me he was like if you're trying to be a storyteller like that like you ain't finna do it working with these types of people and man bro i just felt so like i felt very dishonored i felt disrespected and you know that felt like a huge call to action moment for me that like i wasn't getting the respect for all this crazy work you know i, I came back um my sophomore year feeling like i had accomplished so much since i left my freshman year you know and I spent a lot of time that summer building connections. I spent that whole previous year building connections and, you know, doing, working as hard as I can virtually and making the most of these relationships in LA and Chicago. And, you know, I felt very disrespected. And, you know, throughout that semester, there was a lot of tension between me and the 
really the whole film department at my school, you know? And it was sad because I could tell, like, the more I continued to step into my own path, the more I could feel, like, my the streets becoming divided between what the my film school curriculum was had curated for us to experience and for us to step into and what I was aiming to become. And, you know, I remember I finally had the good opportunity to finally make, like, films, you know, like, surprise, like, I went to film school to make films, you know, and it was, like, this huge, like, debate that I would constantly have with the department, like, you know, we should be, you should be making a film the first day you step on campus, like, and I still believe that to this day, like, when we open up the film school one day, like, best believe students gonna be hopping right into production, day one, like, experience, exposure is the greatest form of education, you know, and so, we uh, we started uh, this project where we were given uh, random partners, and I was blessed enough to be with uh, Kyler, who's like one of my best friends to this day. Like hired him on to one of the productions for the Acid Rap 10, ten year anniversary tour this past month, and it's like a brother for life type of time. He was like a great above me, and um, this other dude, and so we. We filmed this thing, and um, we were debating on, like, you know, who writes the story, and really the whole purpose of it was to figure out, like, roles and parts and who was going to do what for the shoot, and, you know. <coughs> I didn't even add this, bro, but, like, another part that really upset me was, like, before I even committed to Xavier, I took, like, two or three tours there, and every time they showed me this building across the street and expressed, like, oh, that will, that's going to be where the new film school is going to be, the new studio. And I remember, bro, like, being so energized for that because the current studio is, like, in the oldest dorm building on campus. And um, just is in the basement of the oldest dorm building on campus. That's all I have to say. But anyways, if I was still, at, still there, I would still be at that current spot, needless to say. But anyways, so we... Uh, we hop in um, this project, and our third partner is like, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm going to write this thing, I'm going to direct this thing, and I'm going to lead it. And, you know, me and Kyler are like, cool. And um, it, we write, he wrote this thing about, like, a uh, short film about making a short film. So the whole thing was about, like, this group of kids that was trying to write, like, a short film and, like, would have debates about production and the story and... Um, it was, it was terrible, you know, and so we shot one day at Kyler's crib and, you know, whole production with, like, Kyler's roommates as, like, the actors and, you know, we, we got the footage and because I was, like, the rawest editor in the school, because, like, bro, I started my career as an editor, you know, and so, um, I was like, I'm gonna chop this up, I'm gonna edit it, and, uh, I was just like, this footage ain't gonna do it, and Michael was like, nah, we gotta check it out, and he checks, he's like, this ain't rocking, so, he's like, we finna shoot this at my crib and so he he lives literally like north of milford if anyone from is from cincy knows where that is like 30 minutes away from um xavier you know closer to the city and so kyler he gives me a ride because i'm like kyler we gotta ride this up together man so we got we get the equipment we gotta drive it up and it's like we go there super late and it's you know there's thunderstorms and it's starting to snow this is like October, November of 2021, right? And he, we get there and we're shooting this whole film with like hit this dude's like family and his sister's in it and his like other siblings are in it. And it's like, it, it felt like we were living like in a little dream, bro. I, like every time I, some like weird happened, I would turn to Kyler and be like, there's no way we're doing this right now. Anyway, so we shoot all this stuff there. We probably get done around like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. We get back to campus at like 1 30. Drop off the gear next day because the project's due like that week. Um, our partner is like, yo, Kyler and Vaughn, I'm going to edit this video myself. And I was like kind of turned off. I was like, how you ain't finna give it to me? And I was like, all right, this is your project at this point. So cool. And so he, he texts us the day after. He's like, I'm going to edit this joint tonight and I'm gonna let y'all know how it goes. I was like, cool, let me know when you head over there. If you need an extra hand editing, let me know. 
because he was going to edit it in the like editing room in our studio. And so he texts us he's about to go over. About 15 minutes later, he says, I just got to the studio. Um, I don't know where the SD card is. I lost it on the way here. And bro, literally in between like that, the previous day when we shot and the next day was like the first snowstorm that winter. And so me and Kyler then go out on campus. It's like 25 degrees out the first week of November in Cincy. And we're out there for like an hour and a half looking for this damn SD card. This is like our biggest project of the semester. Needless to say, bro, we lost the SD card. And that was a huge moment, bro, where I was like, okay, I am done with this shit. <laughs> like, bro, I, like, I can't even put in the words how frustrated what I was. Like, anyways, so, and during that time too, bro, like, I was already in that phase of, like, breaking down my options of, you know, am I going to stay in Cincinnati Am I gonna move to Chicago? Am I gonna move to Oklahoma City with my family? Am I gonna move to Florida to work at uh, Disney for like an internship that I was ha was talking to for a few producers there? And I was like spending a lot of time like October, November, like breaking down the pros and cons of each and which one made more sense. Spending a lot of time in prayer every day. And that moment, bro, was like, all right, we finna eliminate Xavier from this, <laughs> like, um, like, to be honest, like, bro, like, I tell people that story so much, but to be honest with y'all, that was for real, like, the turning point. Like, you know, I was tired of, like, you know, folks telling me, like, what I was doing was wrong, that it wasn't a good idea. And, like, at the end of the day, bro, like, I really, I love Xavier. Like, the fellowship I was a part of was amazing. The, you know, brothers and sisters that I met at Xavier that I still talk to to this day, like, they're still amazing people. And, you know, I have so much love and respect for all of them. But I think the biggest reason why I left and felt called to leave was I just wasn't aligned with, like, what the film curriculum was building and what the film curriculum built for the students there and what the intentions were. You know, like, Cincinnati is a huge um, advertising and business city, you know? Like, I think it's, like, eight, you know, of the you know, top 500 companies are in Cincinnati, you know, like between Procter & Gamble, Kroger, Great American, and then you include like the Reds and the Bengals, like, especially P&G, bro, like P&G employs a ton of people there. Um, so a lot of the film curriculum was centered around like advertising or working for the local news, like WLWT, and like that's all cool and that's all needed in this world, but I just wasn't feeling called or inspired by like the courses and the direction that you know the film curriculum had already established you know and you know not being able to be hands-on and being able to innovate from a early beginning like having to wait till your senior year to produce a full film just never made sense to me at all and it still doesn't to this day and so um and during this time too bro like i'm, I'm still setting the chance like every week like new 3d renders of his logo or whatever or, you know, ideas for a music video or a film or short, you know, scripts, like anything that I could think of, bro. And so, um, I drop out. I decide to drop out on November 11th, 2021. I, I decide to do it. And so obviously like I finished that semester, did my finals at the end of that month and I was done at the top of December. And, um, so I leave, bro. And I, I decided to leave, bro, because I felt very called to move to Chicago. And I didn't know how I was gonna get here, when or how or why, but after going to Chicago throughout 2021, because I went there in May with Chance, I went there in uh, July with my mom and my brother to tour DePaul, because I told my family I really wanted to go to DePaul, and really that was just to get them to be more invested at in, uh, Chicago and go out there with me but I really did not have like any intention on going to DePaul but um and then I went there in October of 2021 for my birthday and I also linked with Chance out there at Books and Breakfast that he was hosting throughout that year and um it just felt like 
you know, God will like give you, give you signs and will give you a message. And when you're able to receive and understand that message and know that it, it's from Christ, like you, you want to do everything you can to fulfill that destiny that he has aligned for you. And I just felt like I knew I was going to get to Chicago. I knew, you know, despite me wanting to move to LA at some point or uh, wherever, like I, I just knew my next chapter in life was going to be in Chicago somehow. And so I move, I move into um, Oklahoma with my family in uh, December or really January. You know, I spent a lot of December of that year, like going out to LA for the first time and meeting a ton of my brothers that I'd only known virtually going to the yay and drake concert going to sunday service like it was a really good end of 2021 and i move in with my family and during this time bro it's it's very stressful like i still have my apartment that the lease wasn't up until august of that next year of august 2022 um I, i didn't have any job i didn't have a job i wasn't making money um I really had no idea where I was gonna go. But in January, bro, Chance was taking his first trip to Ghana um, that would lead or lead to him deciding and wanting to do the Black Star Line Festival and wanting to do it in Ghana of, in January of 2023 of this year. And so I saw that he was out there and I, I texted him like January 5th of 2022 over Instagram. I was like, damn, bro, it's really beautiful to see you out in Ghana connecting with these artists and a ton of these different stuff and I I just shot him out of the blue I just shot my shot and was like yo bro like I really I'm gonna be moving to Chicago this year and he was like yo what and I was like yo I've been praying on it and I'm planning on doing it and so a month goes by bro I'm like adjusting to my new short life in OKC you know I'm going to a few Thunder games with my family I joined a gym in the downtown there. I'm going there after dropping my brother off at school every day, like getting in shape and, you know, uh, like going back to Cincinnati once a month for like this uh, double blind study that I was in at Cincinnati Children's for this rare disease that I have called EOE. It's like this chest burn, esophageal esophagitis disease and, um, I finessed it, bro, because I, you know, shout out to the Cincinnati Children's, um, you know, entire staff, bro, like Leslie and that entire team that handles all of like the procedures and whatnot there. Like I consider like that entire team of nurses and people that helped me like family, bro, because they're really like my therapy, you know, because I, I got a chance to see them once a month throughout all of 2021 and for the entire first half of 2022, like they were a constant cornerstone in my life, you know? And so I I really consider them extremely close. And, you know, I talked through a lot of my best days and my worst days with them because like, you know, during this time, bro, I had to say goodbye to a lot of people from school, from Cincinnati, like, you know, that Travis song that he'd be talking on Utopia, like goodbye, that's life. like that's real bro like you know during this time bro like i I, i'll definitely say like it felt very purposeful and felt very intentional but that's needless to say that there wasn't a lot of pain there wasn't a lot of emotional nights there wasn't a lot of you know single nights by myself where i was constantly doubting myself and being very emotional about what i was leaving in cincinnati and you know I, i expressed that a lot to them and so anyways uh, they were so kind enough to be like, yeah, despite you moving to Oklahoma, like you can qualify to see if you could be a traveling uh, contestant of the study. And they would pay for my hotel, my travels. And so I finessed it, bro, where like every every month I would plan like to have one of the flights come from somewhere else or go to somewhere else that is in Oklahoma. So like in uh, February or in January, I went to chicago um for like a week or so and i linked with chance at his studio house at the house of kicks and met with his brother taylor um the month after that in uh february i booked it from cincinnati to la because they would cover for that flight so i only had to pay for one flight from la to oklahoma 
and I linked with all my brothers out there, did some work, worked on this uh, uh, animated show that I've been working on for a while. And then in March, I um, you know did from Oklahoma to Cincinnati, from Cincinnati to Chicago. And I, I went to like a chance event where he was releasing a single and a new music video. And I felt very like I need to show face. And at that time, like they're getting me on board and you know, I got a call out of the blue, like a text when I was at church at the top of uh, March of that year and was like, hey, are you still planning on moving to Chicago? I was like, yes. And it was from Chance. And he was like, okay, someone from the team will be reaching out to you soon. And, you know, bro, that month, like really set the cornerstone for me to move out here full time that summer. And, you know, I it, it was such a leap of faith, bro, because like, I was really the only one that had the vision that I was going to move to Chicago and it wasn't gonna be for school. It wasn't gonna be the year after, it was gonna be this time. And no one else knew, no one else believed, no one else saw the vision, but you know, bro, from you know leaving the crib in Cincy, from leaving college to living with my family, like I, I was so like tunnel vision, like knew that God had destined and preamp that movement for me and it was really on to me to prepare myself that season mentally and you know step into the word more and pray and get deeper in my faith and you know just really prepare myself for that new journey and what's been this journey for the last year now and so I moved to Chicago last last summer and I'm living in the suburbs and you know it was it was crazy like you know right when I got there bro like working on a music video for Chance and Joey Badass the highs and the lows working for a bar about a bar working on Wraith with Chance and Vic Mensa like I was just thrown into this like thunderdome of constant videos and ideations and a few months after that he announced you know the festival in Ghana and you know bro I'll definitely go more in depth but like it, it was this crazy progression of like you know going from zero to 100 like I knew God had prepared this road and this journey for me but when you finally hop into it and you're spending like three straight days at the studio house just editing and working on stuff like once you get there bro like you don't realize it until you're in it that like damn like this is exactly what I prayed for you know and I had so much energy and was determined to make a difference in the organization and you know make a name for myself you know and I believe I did that with confidence, perseverance, determination, innovation, like, and just being myself, you know? And so, man, it, it's been a wild journey. And, you know, this past year, like, you know, I, I produced the documentation of the whole Black Starline Festival, the largest festival in Ghanaian history, 50,000 people, January 6, 2023, like, and it was literally exactly a year after on the same day that I texted him, like, yo, I'm, I'm thinking of coming to Chicago and moving here. And so, like, did that, was the main editor for You Know with King Promise, um, also shot on that video as well, did a ton of creative direction for rollout strategy, did all the branding for the festival, um, helped with creative for all the TV late night performances, and probably my biggest feat, bro, I just uh, directed and produced the documentation of the Acid Rap 10 year anniversary tour uh, in LA, New York, and Chicago from August to September, so, of this year. And so, like, turning 22, bro, like, I just wanted to give you guys an update, like, what, what this previous, you know, two years has been, and since living in Chicago, I've also opened up my own production studio company called Exposure with my brother Jacob and also our project manager Josh. And, uh, you know, we've been doing, you know, our entire crew helped on the Acid Rap Tour, has done a ton of other stuff in the city with the Wonder Museum, Vic Mensa, a few other artists here. Um, shout out to Bobby Beats, Guapo, everyone. And so, needless to say, bro, like, I'll cover that more, but I feel like this video was needed to express like what the last two years has been and you know why I left Cincinnati and really continuing to just step into that purpose and step into that mission. I think like to end this video off, man, like 
I want to express that, especially for kids, if they're in school still, if they're still trying to figure things out. Like, I'm also in a space, bro, where I've just learned, like, it's really that Socrates time. Like, the wisest man knows that he knows nothing. And that's so true, bro. Like, you know, when I was even, you know, producing this document documentary about the uh, tour, like, I was at this huge, you know, warehouse with, like, 50 people on our crew. And the AC is coming up to me, like, asking me about specific settings on the camera. And I'm, like, got the iPhone on the side, like, literally texting me, like, looking up, like, what does this mean, you know? And so I would just express, bro, like, you just got to continue to pray and really just listen to yourself. Like, that was the biggest thing these last two years of, like, no one else believed in this vision or mission other than me no one else believed that this was god's plan other than me you know and i i just kept that same mentality throughout and got us here today but i i really plan on posting more here bro my memory's about to kick out on this camera so i'm trying to rush it but i love you guys and um many more stories to come but this is just like a tip of the iceberg as to what the v rob thunderdome experience has looked like the last few years so i love you guys it's blessed to be back Many blessings.